Hey guys, I'm Abur and welcome back to World of Warships. Today we're looking at the British Premium Tier 6 battleship, the HMS Warspite. Now this is in fact the first British ship in World of Warships, and it's not that bad. Now a lot of people say this ship is terrible and that the Fuso is better in every respect, um, but I disagree. And the stats of this ship um, make out as if this ship is worse than the Fuso in every respect except for concealment, um, but it is deceiving. This ship turns exceptionally fast and the guns do a huge amount of damage. There are however some disadvantages to having the HMS Warspite over the Fuso and that is that the guns do turn at a very very slow turn time of 72 seconds for 180 degrees which is one of the worst turn times in the game if not the worst um, and the Citadel is very weakly armoured so it's very easy to get Citadel hits on this ship. Okay so let's look at the main stats of the HMS Warspite, the first British ship in World of Warships. So, survivability is 65 out of 100. That's quite good for a battleship. Uh, we only have one ship to compare to, and that is the Fuso. And the Fuso has 69 out of 100, which is slightly better for a raw stat. Um, the max health of the HMS Warspite is 53,800. And the arm is up to 330 millimeters. Now, being a premium ship, you'd expect the HMS Warspite to have a disadvantage in terms of statistics over a tier line ship, such as the Fuso. The Fuso at the same tier has 57,000 health, which is slightly higher, and the armour is slightly less at 305mm. Now, the armour is situated in different locations for each ship. In the HMS Warspite, it is 1 to 15mm in the Citadel, 6 to 152mm in the forward and after ends, the gun casemate is 1 to 330mm, and the armour deck is 1 to 44mm. Now, this ship is very heavily armoured around the gun casemate that protects this ship from magazine detonations. So on the deck of the ship, the ship can shake off shells quite quickly. Um, it is, however, quite weak in the Citadel, only up to 15mm in comparison to the Fusos, up to 305mm in the Citadel. So this ship can die very easily if the ships are very precise. If, for instance, people are using this um, aim mod to fire at certain locations of the Warspite, the Warspite is dead. Um, it's very easy to kill a Warspite if you know where you're shooting, but then again, if you're not shooting correct places, then it's very hard to kill a Warspite. Now, you notice on the Warspite they have very big anti-torpedo bulges on the side. Now, this thing eats up torpedoes like no one's business. Um, you see these huge plates on the side. Um, they're designed to negate damage from torpedoes. So these bulges act as a defense. They negate most of the damage from incoming torpedoes, and they come in handy and they reduce flooding. In comparison to the Fuso, and the Fuso has very flat sides, as you can see here. And the Fuso suffers definitely more floodings than the Warspite. So the survivability of the Warspite overall is quite good. The next stat of the ship is artillery firepower, so 59 out of 100. That's quite a good score for a battleship. Although not as good as the Fuso, the Fuso has a score of 70 out of 100, um, primarily because of the um, turrets. There are four turrets for the Warspite and six turrets for the Fuso. The guns are 381mm in calibre versus the Fuso's 356mm, so there's a slight advantage there in terms of armour penetration and high damage. The average damage of these guns is 6060 for high explosive and 12590 for armour piercing. These guns also have quite a good accuracy at only 226 meters dispersion. The big disadvantage with these guns, however, is the turning time. 180 degree turn time with these guns is 72 seconds. Now that is one of the worst in the game at the moment, if not the worst. And you have a rate of fire of 2.0 rounds per minute, so this thing can fire every 30 seconds. The max range of these guns is only 16.3 kilometers, which is terrible for a battleship. So this thing is pushing towards cruisers, max distance on guns, not very good. Considering these guns are nearing 400 millimeters, you'd expect these guns to go in excess of 20 kilometers. But being a premium ship, you get some good parts and you get some bad parts. And the bad part about this ship is the max distance. Something I forgot to add with the artillery firepower of this ship is that it has secondary armament, similar to other ships where the um, some of the guns fire at both air targets and ground targets. It's the same here with the secondary armament guns, which act as both anti-air guns and anti-ship guns. And also we have um, 8 times 152mm, 4 on each side, which are good at taking down cruisers and destroyers. Next out of the ship is anti-air capability, so 33 out of 100. 
Because this is a premium ship, you don't have the highest stats in the game. It's a dumbed down, lesser version than a tier line ship. The Fuso has 40, so the Fuso has a slight edge here. It's kind of hard for this thing to shoot down planes. Um, but then again, it's a, it's a battleship, so its primary role isn't to shoot down planes and defend the fleet. The anti-air capability of this ship is purely to defend itself. Now, 33 score can shoot down some planes, but you're not going to get it too often, so don't rely too heavy on um, shooting down planes from 4 kilometers away. Um, rely more upon your allied cruisers to do that for you. Most tier 6 ships and above have a vast increase in anti-air capability, uh, much more than the lesser tiers, and this thing can shoot down planes um, every so often. Okay, so the next stat is maneuverability. The War Spite has fantastic maneuverability. This 29 score is deceiving. Um, it is, however, a better score than the Fuso. The Fuso only has 26. Um, but the maximum speed of this ship is only 24 knots. That's not the greatest. That's what really this 29 score reflects, is its max speed. Um, its turning circle radius, however, is fantastic. Now, the turning circle radius of this ship is very much like a destroyer or a very, very light cruiser. It has 550 meter turning circle radius. That is an outstanding score for a battleship versus the Fuso at the same tier of the similar displacement of 910 meters. So this has, a, it's almost half. A fantastic turning circle radius for a battleship. I didn't actually expect any battleships in this game to have a score of less than 700 meters, but this is, this is amazing. This ship is fantastic at turning, can very easily avoid torpedoes. It can very easily turn broadside on to another battleship if within close proximity. And the rudder shift time of this ship is 20 seconds. Not, not the fastest, it's a bit slower than the Fuso. The Fuso has 18.9 seconds. There's a slight disadvantage with the rudder shift time, but with this ship I've chosen the credit board upgrade which decreases the rudder shift time by 20%. So the maneuverability score is very deceiving. I think it deserves a much higher score than that, much higher praise. Um, but I believe the 29 score reflects a top speed of 24 knots, which is very sluggish and very slow. It's going towards the um, back end of the top speeds in the game. And the last stat of the War Spite is the Concealment. So 39 out of 100. That is such a high score for a battleship, much higher than the Tier 6 Japanese battleship, the Fuso. The Fuso has 15 out of 100 versus 39 for the War Spite. It's a huge score. The surface detectability of this ship is only 14.2 kilometers, and air detectability is only 11.4 kilometers. That's against the Fuso's 18.9 and 12.2. So this has a huge advantage in terms of concealment. It's a big ship. It's a long ship. It's a very fat ship, and it has the advantage of hiding at long distance. So there were the main stats of the War Spite. It's a very competent ship overall, uh, in many respects. It, it, it has some disadvantages, yes. It's hard to play, but if you play it correctly, if you duke out at the right distance going around rocks, you can very easily get high amounts of damage with your high penetration guns, um, and you can get a top of your team in experience and credits. So the first modification I've chosen for this ship is the main battery modification one. So I usually choose this for most of my ships with small amounts of guns. This ship only has four turrets with eight guns, minus 20% chance of magazine detonation, minus 20% chance of critical damage up to main battery, and minus 20% main battery repair time. Now these guns, when they get hit by high explosives, they can uh, be knocked out and they can be destroyed. So this upgrade, in my opinion, is necessary to maintain the guns being up for as long as possible. The second upgrade I've chosen here is the Gunfire Control System Modification 1, which I use with most of my high DPM ships with sort of mid-range to low accuracy. These guns are quite accurate for a battleship, um, but they could be more. Battleship guns don't tend to be that accurate anyway, and they are quite a high caliber. So the Gunfire Control System mod increases main battery firing accuracy, so I hit more shots instead of miss them. The third upgrade I chose here, which is the Damage Control System mod 1, which is, in my opinion, necessary for all battleships in the game. It's a minus 3% chance of flooding and minus 5% chance of fire. Now this ship has fantastic bulges on the left and right and it can eat up torpedoes very easily but from time to time you do get a torpedo and it does induce flooding this reduces that by three percent the fourth upgrade i chose here is the minus 20 percent rudder shift time um, the turning circle radius of this ship is outstanding um, fantastic for a battleship but i've reduced the rudder shift time which is quite sluggish at 20 seconds i could have chosen this one here which is the minus 20 percent time to reach full power this thing does get to its stop speed quite slowly, it's, it's only 25, 24 knots, 
but this helps in getting to the top speed quicker. As soon as you start turning left or right with your turning circle radius, the ship speed does dramatically decrease uh, to something like 15 knots, which is very slow. So you're more of a sitting target. So this is a good upgrade if you want to get to um, sort of 15 knots to max speed as quickly as possible. So in my opinion, this ship is played similar to how a cruiser is played in that you push them to your max distance. This is only limited to 16 kilometers, so you have to utilize that as best as you can. Uh, lure the battleships in to come within your firing range. Don't engage them directly. Use that turning circle radius to your advantage, turning left, right very quickly to avoid all kinds of shells heading your general direction. Um, and if necessary, you can brawl in this thing, um, and it can be quite fun. This thing can take a huge amount of punishment with its huge amount of armor of up to 330 millimeters. But if people hit you in the citadel, you can take a serious amount of damage. Yeah, so let's get into some games with the War Spite. Okay, so this is the uh, HMS Warspite on New Dawn Domination Mode. As you can see, we have quite a lot of Tier 6, 5 and 4s on our team. And they have a Tier 3 and some Tier 6s. Um, this is usually the uh, matchmaking you would see in the HMS Warspite. So as a typical battleship, you have the um, heal ability, which um, all the battleships in the game have. You have the scout plane, and you have the repair button. So I'm going to head towards C, which is usually a good spot to um, duke out with enemy ships at the beginning of the battle and quite a few of my allies are going there as well and a token force is going to head towards A to hopefully capture A and then move in and hopefully capture B so unfortunately the max distance of these guns is only 16.2 kilometers which isn't really a lot for a battleship so you're at a disadvantage um, trying to fire at long distances um, so you want to sort of lure the enemy towards you by lurking around rocks um, until um, they're within range of your guns now the guns Yes, they don't go very far, but they do a substantial amount of damage. They have up to um, around 13,000 damage per shell with armor-piercing rounds. So at this point I've noticed two enemy Fusos, which is the um, nemesis of the War Spikes, coming in quite close. They can fire at me at this distance and I can't fire at them, but I haven't been spotted. Um, that shell just there, you might have seen it, a bit of a glitch. It, it went right through the citadel uh, and just disappeared. Uh, that does happen from time to time. So quite a lot of enemies have emerged. There's a Kuma, there's a Cleveland. I have the choice of either firing at the Kuma or the Fuso, and obviously the Fuso is the higher threat, so I choose the Fuso over the Kuma. I'm firing armor piercing at the Fuso. Uh, the Fuso is a big threat. Hopefully we get a good hit, and there we are, 4,200 damage. That's quite good for one shell. So I'm just going to show you here, I, I was just about to crash in this replay, so I am maneuvering the ship very hard left and right, and you can see how quickly it turns and reduces speed. That is one of the big advantages of this ship, is how fast it can turn to avoid torpedoes, to avoid enemy shells. It's just great. Going to fire another salvo here. Nearly 4,000 damage, not too bad, um, but not, not a damage roll you would expect um, in this ship. This ship, full broadside, can do substantial amounts of damage. So now I've noticed the, the enemy cruiser is sort of lurking um, straight. He's going the opposite direction to I am, so he's a terrible target to fire at the Fuso side onto us. Fantastic ship to target. 12.4 kilometers away, firing a broadside. <sighs> Missed most of the shells. 2,600 damage. Now, these guns are quite accurate, but 10 kilometers plus, you can very easily miss when you look like you're about to hit them. Now, I have choice here of either firing at the Cleveland or the Fuso. So I'll choose the Fuso. He's very nearly heading towards the ground there, so he's going to hit ground. Um, now's my chance to fire him before he gets around that rock. So ignore the Cleveland for now. Fire at the Fuso. Hopefully get a good hit. 11,600. And we knocked out one of his guns. Now that's not that's quite a good hit. Um, but now he's about to run aground and go past this rock. So we don't really have a chance of getting any damage on him at this point. He's side on to us. So now we can fire at him too. It's always a pain when ships are pointing in the opposite direction to you. It's really hard to get an accurate shot. Because all your guns on the ship are angled, uh, they all have different trajectories, they all fire um, at the same target from different angles. So you're always going to miss, uh, if you hit with two, then you're more likely to miss um, with the other two. Like the instance, the Karachi here um, is he's sort of reversing. We fired two barrels at the start, and we missed, and we're firing again, and we missed all of them except for the ones in the middle, which are the, my guns on the furthest right. So they are a smaller target, so they are harder to hit um, but it can be a pain so the Quachi's here seven and a half kilometers away he's he's sort of dead in the water he's, he's reversing for some odd reason I don't know why um, but my allies have sort of backed off around me they're not 
really engaging as hard as I am. I'm sort of really pushing at this point. Although I didn't actually realise at this point in the replay um, that my allies have disappeared. We hit another for 4,000. That's quite good. It's so easy in this game to... So forget everything else around you except for the ship you're firing at. As soon as you start aiming, it's so easy to to forget everything what's going on on the side of you, behind you, other ships in the distance. You're only focusing on that one ship. So the Kratty's there. I have guns available in two seconds. He's at a good angle for me to shoot him. He's sort of halfway to sideways on. Fire a broadside. 587 damage. So again, we got a very low damage roll. Um, that does happen quite often in this ship, I've noticed. Um, it might just be me. But this ship is actually... Its overall damage potential with its uh, armor-pissing shells are, is just, just massive. Okay, the Cleveland is putting holes in me over and over again with his amazing DPM. I can't do a lot about that at the moment. I need to take care of the Quachi. The Quachi's in a, a position to spot me. I do have good concealment, so as soon as this guy's dead and I don't fire, I should be mostly hidden from the enemies. Eight kilometers away. Now that's nearing sort of secondary armament. Firing one more broadside. And we got him. One Citadel hit on a Kwachi. That's not bad. Let me finish him off. So the Fuso I was duking out with earlier is around the corner there. I'm not going to go around that corner uh, just yet. Um, there's so many enemies in the distance here and in the middle. If I did that, it would be pretty much suicidal. Now my allies are still sort of uh, lurking back. At this point, I do realise, oh crap, I'm in a terrible position. Uh, there's planes above me, torpedo bombers. Cleveland's putting holes in me. The Fuso in the distance. The Fuso on my left. I haven't put myself in a good position. I don't have repair up for another 15 seconds. The Cleveland has to die. I'm going to fire a broadside at him. But the guns turn so slowly. 72 seconds. The back guns just won't turn at this point. The front ones are nearly there. Um, but I'm just not getting enough um, speed on that turn time. Now, torpedoes are incoming at this point. The torpedo bomber has put them down. I'm going to show you guys the turning time of this ship. Just how quickly it can turn left and right now. Those torpedoes didn't have a single chance of hitting me. It's so, so easy to just turn left and right in this thing and very easily miss the torpedoes. So the enemy carries there. That's a bit of a surprise, um, a carry being so close to the battle. I did accidentally um, ram the ally. I apologize for it. <laughs> but what can you do? Um, the enemy team is the when you're sort of focusing on a target, it's so easy just to forget where your ship's going as well. Trying to get the guns around on this Cleveland, deciding it's not a good idea because the guns just won't turn fast enough, thinking about going on the independence. That's not working either. Um, gonna turn this thing around and just start from scratch. Get the guns all around, wait 72 seconds for the guns to go all the way around, and then fire on a target with all my guns. The Cleveland is 11 kilometers away, the other Cleveland. Uh, they're not focusing on me so much now, they're focusing more on my ally on my left, uh, the Phoenix and the Congo, it seems. The Phoenix is a very easy target to kill, has such little armor, uh, and against the Cleveland's high damage per minute, it doesn't really have a chance. Now, a lot of people fire high explosive at this thing, I've noticed, mainly because it's a slow, sluggish beast, and you do get set on fire quite a lot. Uh, the Cleveland is in the distance there, only 10 kilometers, going to fire a broadside when the guns are around. They're nearly all around, but they have, unfortunately, knocked out one of my guns. So you have to sort of turn left, turn right, and then and just don't touch WASD and just let it let it go. Just let it let it smooth, and then and then your guns will eventually focus on the target. It's impossible to turn and get the guns around at the same time. So the Cleveland saw my shots coming, and he has turned to avoid them. The enemy Fuso we were joking out with early, he has escaped being beached, and he's lurking around the corner now. Three thousand seven hundred health. We want to finish the fight. He was fighting with us at the start, putting holes in us, substantial amounts of damage, and vice versa. Hopefully, we can finish him off. Oh, 113 damage. Any shell hit. Oh, yeah, there we are. One kill. Uh, easy kill, really. Um, that has happened quite often, I've noticed as well. It's when you put, keep putting holes in enemies, um, and then you're the unlucky one where you fire a broadside, and then the enemy, the enemy has something like 100 health, and then you think, oh, crap. And then, of course, you don't get a kill. Um, you do get an assist, but I don't know how much experience that is. So at this point, we only have three guns. Um... We have the repair, which we are repairing now. We have taken a substantial amount of damage during that sort of bad part at the start of the match. We're going to fire at the Cleveland. And unfortunately, we only got in for a few hundred uh, damage. Another Cleveland is lurking there. We, ha we have two Clevelands uh, right in front of us. Have to choose which one's the best option. The Fuso in the distance there as well. We're going back at this point to try and capture B or defend B from further attack. Now, the enemy Fuso is still here. We're being capped quite well over. Our team's losing quite substantially at this point. I'm going to fire at this Cleveland to try and put some holes in him, get some good damage. Missed the first ones, he dodged them. The second ones, he mostly missed. We only hit him once for 2,000 damage. So, 
not a lot, but he has become grounded at this point. So he's a sitting target, very easy to kill if I get my guns on him. So at this point, he's a sitting target. We really need to deal with him. I find all my shots just slightly back because he's reversing at this point. There we are. Some 147 damage, 3,000 damage. And unfortunately, we didn't finish him off with that broadside. He is nine kilometers away, so the accuracy of battleship guns does sort of get worse and worse as distance goes on. So he's still sitting target. He's on fire, though. My ally has set him on fire. He's 6,300 health left. Firing one more broadside. 4,100 damage. And then he's 1,000 health from death. Anyone on my team fires at him and this guy's dead. Um, but we have seven seconds left. So it's actually working out for us. We can actually finish him off. As long as the allies don't finish him off. Oh, they hit him for 100. Come on. And we got him. Two hits, 1,000 damage, and we finished off the Cleveland. So another Cleveland is just over there, um, 10 kilometers away in the Fuso in the distance. And uh, it seems one of our battleships in the far corner is duking out with the enemy carrier, which is very odd. It's such close proximity if you look at the top of the map. He should really be focusing on the Fuso. Uh, we are losing quite dramatically at this point. We are, uh, what is a third of our team left, and the enemy has half their team left. And we're losing in terms of capping points. Um, they have two bases and we only have the one. So unless a miracle happens at this point, we can't turn around the game and we can't the win. win. So the Cleveland's over there, very low health, along with the enemy Kuma, which is also very low health. So I have two choices there and another ship on my right, which I can also target. Going to focus down the Cleveland. 5,000. All we need is a couple of hits. Ah, 800 damage from four hits. Ah, what are the odds? Penetrations, but no damage. Torpedo's coming on my right. I managed to try and avoid it, but it's sort of going at a slight angle. I didn't see it coming, and it put a hole on me, and I am now flooding. It did hit at an odd angle, um, and of course, all torpedoes can induce flooding, irrespective of how big your torpedo bulges are. So we're going to fire once more at this Cleveland. He only has 3,000 health left. Firing over this hill, only hit him twice. Don't know for how much damage. We are flooding at this point, and we're on fire. So we're slowing down. As soon as, you're as, soon as you start flooding, you lose so much speed and I'm on fire so I'm taking flooding and fire damage the enemy Cleveland's there I'm trying to turn left and to avoid the destroyer then turning right the allied carrier is sitting there for some reason I'm not sure why um, he might be doing it as like trying to save me from further damage and the carrier needs to survive either one of us dies and the game ends so I have to finish with the Cleveland oh god two hits practically no damage and now we have incoming torpedoes on our flank from the um, destroyer He's not a threat to us now, the torpedoes have missed. The Cleveland is now focused down the allied carrier. The carrier has no armor. He's being shot from two different angles. He's a goner and, and of course, plus 90 on the scoreboard and then we lose the game. Uh, we did, however, get 242,000 credits, nearly 1,400 base experience, 66,000 damage, 60 uh, sort of free experience. Uh, we destroyed three ships and we got one citadel hit. We defended the base, a um, couple of critically damaged. So unfortunately we did lose that match, but we did go through the main aspects of the HMS Warspite. It is a formidable ship. In that match we got around 70,000 damage for a tier 6 ship is a huge amount. Yes, yeah, so the HMS Warspite. Some would say it's a terrible ship, some would say it's a great ship. I would say it's a good ship. Um, it has a lot of strengths and it has a lot of weaknesses. Some of the strengths of the HMS Warspite include the massive amounts of maximum damage uh, with its guns, um, the amazing circle turning radius of this ship, um, it does have disadvantages, however, mainly the armor in the Citadel. It's very easy to take down this ship. If you accurately target this ship's Citadel, uh, you can take substantial amount of damage and you will be very easily knocked out. And also the guns don't turn very quickly. 72 seconds is one of the worst in the game, if not the worst. So you have to think 10 steps ahead. Um, think about as soon as you're turning the ship, think how that affects the guns. As soon as you turn left or right with your very quick turning circle radius, your guns are messed up. You need to think of a new ship to target. This ship's not particularly fast as well, only going 25 knots, which isn't very fast for a battleship, um, or any ship for that matter. This ship is good. It's not great, it's not bad, it's good in my opinion. So I don't honestly believe they did the uh, Grand Old Lady justice. I do think this is the earlier version of the Grand Old Lady. Um, I do also believe that there will be a Queen Elizabeth class um, battleship coming in the future, down the uh, British battleship line, which would be very nice to see the fully upgraded uh, Queen Elizabeth class. If you guys love a really tough battleship, 
uh, a slow battleship, mind you, but a tough battleship with powerful guns, I would really suggest the War Spite. It's only 7,500 doubloons or gold, whatever you want to call it. It's in game at the moment, so unfortunately you can't buy it through the store. You go into the game through Tech Tree and then go to the British tier line and then it'll be there. So thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.